Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Doing which sport will add the most years to your life? An interesting study from the Mayo Clinic evaluated just this question. Let's go through the paper and see what they found. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the study. Various leisure time physical activities associated with widely divergent life expectancies. The Copenhagen City Heart Study. The objective of the study was to evaluate differential improvements in life expectancy associated with participation in various different sports. They used the Copenhagen City Heart Study for this, which is a prospective population study and used questionnaires to gather the data. There were 8,577 participants and the follow-up was for 25 years from October 1991 to March 2017. So the study has a significant population and is for a long period of time. Here are the eight sports that they studied. Can you guess which are the top three? You can stop the video for a moment if you need more time to decide. And here are the results. Soccer number three, badminton number two, and tennis as the winner. If any of you have followed Dr. David Sinclair, he has spoken about this earlier. Let's hear what he said. And, and the future, I think, is really bright. You can imagine a future where a 90-year-old is just as healthy as a 50-year-old and still plays tennis. And maybe we see people reaching their hundreds when uh, they can uh, see their great-grandkids graduate from uni. In the study, they used sedentary people as a baseline and looked at how much longer people who participated in the sports lived. They adjusted for smoking, education, income, alcohol consumption, and diabetes. They also ran the statistics on only those with a college degree and found no significant differences. We can see tennis had easily the best outcome at 9.7 years, which is 56% better than badminton, which is in the second place while health club activities such as running on machines and weightlifting had the lowest impact. They also collected the amount of time that participants spent on their activities. This chart shows average time spent on each activity in minutes per week. A number of the participants did more than one activity, but at a high level, we can see that the amount of time spent on activity was not related to the lifespan extension. The team did look at what might be the characteristics of the sports which provided these benefits. The first of these was the social aspect. Sports which require two or more people to play together and interact, such as tennis, badminton and soccer, did better, whereas those which are inherently more solitary, such as jogging, swimming, cycling and the health club activities, were associated with less longevity gains. This is in line with other studies which show that social isolation is among the strongest predictor of reduced life expectancy. This is also something that comes up in the Blue Zone studies where a sense of community is viewed as being very important. They also looked at the physical activities of the sports and saw that sports with the best outcomes required interval bursts of exercise using large muscle groups and full body movements, whereas sports performed in a continuous manner did less well. They also noted that the exercise benefits were U-shaped, that is, more is not necessarily better. In particular for jogging, they saw that the hazard ratio increased with more exercise, where the hazard ratio is the chance of an event happening to group one, divided by the chance of it happening to group two. And in this case, the event is dying, so a low hazard ratio is good. And we can see that the lowest is for the light joggers. In fact, they found that strenuous joggers' mortality was not statistically different from that of sedentary people. In conclusion, they say that all forms of activity provided some increased longevity. However, there was a wide range of benefits between the different sports. They do note that this was an observational study, so causation is not shown, only correlation. And that sports with a social component did better. My wife and I played tennis before and would consider taking it up again. In our fourth newsletter, we talked about a tennis player who is 100 and still playing. Let's see what he's up to.
is here already. Mr. Loy Lettis is not in his 80s or his 90s. He is a centenarian who has four children, 11 grandchildren and 14 great-grandchildren. And he is still playing tennis. Also, he's not living in a blue zone. He's living in Mountain View, a city in the US, a little south of San Francisco. The Mercury News asked about his secret of longevity. Mr. Lettis mentioned maybe it's working on the farm picking apples. It's very encouraging to read this news. Mr. Lettis is a very good example for a healthy centenarian, proving that you can still be healthy and active and still enjoy life and sports with your friends in your hundreds.